When Adobe launched Captivate 2017, one of the features I was most excited about was Fluid Box responsive design. Overall, I was really pleased with how easily Fluid Box responsive design worked for me. However, I did see that there was some room for improvement. With the launch of Adobe Captivate 2019, however, I feel that most of those concerns that I have have been addressed. Let me show you. So first off, let's start off by building a fluid box responsive slide here. I'm going to start off with my fluid box icon. Uh, here I can select either horizontal fluid boxes or vertical fluid boxes. Let me just say that I think one of the most important things when designing responsive design, especially fluid box responsive design, is that you make sure you plan out ahead of time what your needs are going to be. Uh, storyboarding, of course, is, is fundamental in what we do. So I'm going to start off, I have something in mind here. I'm going to start off with some vertical fluid boxes. And I'm going to go with three. And so what we're going to have here is title area up here, some content in the middle, and navigation controls at the bottom. I'm going to further subdivide this uh, middle fluid box by adding uh, an additional fluid box or dividing it in half so that we have two child level fluid boxes in this middle fluid box here. Now right off the bat, one of the things you'll probably notice is that as you roll over your fluid boxes with your mouse, they highlight right on the stage. So you'll know exactly which fluid box you're going to select. But if you take a look over in the properties panel, the fluid box selector will also highlight the appropriate fluid box there. So you can very clearly know which fluid box you're working with. There's a couple of small changes to the fluid box selector window, and I'll point those out now. The first is that next to each fluid box, you'll see, of course, a small icon. This icon represents the content flow for that particular fluid box. So if, for example, you were troubleshooting why your fluid box isn't displaying properly, that's a quick way you can glance at it and see exactly what content flow is set up for that particular fluid box. Also, in the case of each fluid box, as you select them, you'll see that there is a delete icon next to each of the fluid boxes. And this makes it real easy to not only select the, the correct fluid box before deleting it, but deleting it with a single mouse click. There was one feature in Captivate 2017 with fluid boxes that I think a lot of people missed because it was hidden underneath the Options tab of your Properties panel. But now it's right up front, and this is quite useful if you want to have uh, specific fill styles for each of your fluid boxes. I actually want to use that for this particular design here, so I'm going to select that top fluid box where my title's intended to go. And I'm going to select um, a fluid box uh, fill style. I can choose solid, I can choose gradient, and I can even uh, import an image or pull an image from the library and use that as a fill style as well. In this case, I'm going to stick with solid fill and uh, choose a color, let's say this uh, dark blue here, and I'm going to set the opacity at 100%. In Captivate 2017, if you needed to resize your fluid boxes, you would use these tiny blue selection handles and drag them somewhat arbitrarily to the position that you want. Now, if I had multiple slides in this particular project that shared the same fluid box style for titles, for example, uh, it would be very difficult to get them all to be resized exactly the correct height or in the case of uh, certain fluid boxes width as well. But actually now with Captivate 2019, a big, big improvement that I was hoping for was the ability to go over to my position panel with the fluid box selected and simply type in the height either as a percentage or as a number of pixels that I have in mind. So for this example here, I'm thinking 70 pixels 
is appropriate. And I'm going to do the same thing with the navigation area here at the bottom. I'm going to set that. I'm going to make it a little larger. I'm going to make it 75 pixels at the bottom there. There's a new addition to your preview bar for responsive design here. It's a layout preview. And it's also duplicated down in your wrap options area here. And what's great about this is that you can press this. It's kind of like a play pause button that when you press it, it gives you a preview of what your project looks like across a wide variety of screen sizes. Uh, I did say it's a pause function as well. So when you get to a point where you want to preview it, you can actually click it again and just see a paused version of that particular size if you wish. Of course, you can always go back to desktop just by selecting that from your layout preview here. In this example, I want to make some changes to the content flow and the wrap options. So what I'm going to do is one by one select all of my fluid boxes. Uh, a little hint to those that are new to fluid boxes. I like to actually start off with squeeze in a row for most of my fluid boxes, simply because I find that I use that option more often than any others. And then of course later change it if I need to for certain fluid boxes. So for example, squeeze in a row works really well if you have, uh, let's say, some navigation controls like I've got down here. I'm going to select those. Currently, I have those unlocked from fluid box, so I'm just going to uncheck that so I can lock them into this fluid box. And they pop into place right there. In this case here, the advantage of having squeeze in a row is that they're not going to wrap down to another row and uh, you know create kind of a confusing user interface. Uh, let me just move these around to the right position here. That's better. And of course, uh, you know, we've got a horizontal content flow, which makes sense where these buttons are left to right. The wrap option is squeeze in a row. Uh, we're going to change this from align to center to putting space all around these buttons. So they're nicely spaced across there. Let's try that new layout preview and see how that works with our uh, navigation controls. That's pretty awesome. So let me drag some of the rest of my content in here. I have a title which will, uh, once I uncheck unlock from fluid box, we'll go into this top area there. And uh, I also have some text, just some sample dummy text that I'll place in the right hand side fluid box here in the center content area. Currently maintain aspect ratio is checked off. I just want to fill this, so I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. However, uh, with that fluid box selected, I'm going to add a little padding uh, from left to right so that it's not jammed right up against the uh, neighboring fluid boxes here. About 20 pixels is fine. And you could do the, the top and bottom as well if you wish, just a little bit there. So one of the things that sometimes happens when you're working with your responsive design fluid box uh, project is you might resize something ac accidentally. Like I might resize these buttons here and it kind of ruins that particular layout. Uh, so what you may want to choose is the fluid box where those objects are contained and the addition of a distribute objects equally button is a welcome addition to Captivate 2019. Same thing here if I select the parent of these two fluid boxes and I want the fluid boxes to be equal I can distribute those objects equally and I get the nice layout that I'm looking for. Now, generally speaking, fluid boxes work fine as they are, but there are occasions when you might need to either make a fluid box optional or a fluid box static. So this case over here, I'm going to have actually an image of a map of the world. And in addition, I'm going to place a flag over top of Canada. Now, normally with regular fluid boxes, you can't st stack objects on top of one another. 
and that's when static fluid boxes come into play. So let's first of all select this fluid box here, and I'm going to check off that it's uh, I'm going to check that it's optional and static. So we're going to set that up accordingly. Now one of the additions to Captivate 2019 is the ability to align your objects within a static fluid box uh, a number of different ways. In Captivate 2017, the only way you could do this was really just center aligned for both objects. Uh, but in this case here, I'm going to drag in my map of the world for starters. And again, with the fluid box selected, I could decide that maybe it should be top aligned. So that will make a lot more sense for what I'm doing. And in this case here, we're going to drag this object, uh, which is the Canadian flag, so that it's over top of the map of Canada. So you'll see that um, dragging the Canada flag over Canada allows you to stack two objects over top of one another, and there could be more as well. But the other advantage of a static fluid box is that it, it maintains its position relative to one another. So you don't need to worry about it changing position as you see it on different screens. I've also set this up to be optional. So what will happen is that once it drops down to a certain point in size, all of the content in this optional fluid box will disappear. Let's use the new layout preview to see what that looks like. That's perfect. So I think we can all agree that the new enhanced fluid box responsive design in Captivate 2019 gives you a lot more predictable results and allows you to really design something that you have in mind. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.